Hi, I've heard that lasers will change wavelength, color with temperature. That makes me curious. Can I detect the change in my home with some low-budget items and common laser pointers? Let's find out. Lots of scattered laser beams in this video. Don't trust the power level on the laser's label. Always wear laser safety goggles. Also be aware of possible infrared leakage from cheap green laser pointers. In this video I will challenge laser pointers with three different colors. Violet, green and red. They will go through a big temperature change in a short amount of time. Don't do this to lasers you wish to keep. It may ruin them or shorten their lifespan significantly. Therefore, I am using the cheapest laser pointers I could find. They were so cheap that they only weigh 75 grams without batteries. For comparison, a common green laser pointer weighs 70 grams alone, almost the same as the three combined. 74 grams. They keep getting lighter still. At this featherweight, they can't have proper heat sinks, but that is only an advantage in this case since I want a quick temperature change. I will use a simple setup with inexpensive diffraction gratings. For more info on the setup and calculations, I have links for two videos in the description. For a start, I tested in a sloppy setup from ambient temperature and simply let the lasers heat up on their own. I did not see much change in wavelength over 5 minutes. The direct diode lasers at 405 nanometers violet and 650 nanometers red only increased by 1 nanometer. The green DPSS laser acted weird though. It seems to have 3 peaks instead of 1 and the longest at 542 nanometers disappeared as the laser heated up. I haven't seen the 3 dots with my other green lasers. I guess cheapness comes at a price. One nanometer change is not really spectacular, but what if I test over wider temperature range? Time to throw the lasers in the freezer and cool them to minus 19 degrees Celsius. Again, this is not recommended with your own lasers. Lasers don't like moisture or frost, but by vacuum packing them with my low budget vacuum pump. I keep the condensation and frost at a minimum. Sort of. Ok, same experiments but starting with a 40 degrees colder laser diode. Will it make a difference? Will the laser even turn on? Yes, it turns on, but the beam is dim and slim. And yes, it definitely makes a difference. The violet laser increased its wavelength by 5 nanometers over 5 minutes. After heating up it seems brighter and a lot less focused. It can partly be due to the camera's sensitivity at these short wavelengths. The initial 400 nanometers is bordering ultraviolet, which is invisible to our eyes. Let's try the cold red laser with a more visible wavelength. Again, it just turns on nicely without any issues. Look at it crawl. The number crunching reveals a similar increase in wavelength of around 5 nanometers. Not much, but enough to be detectable. How about the cold green laser? Uh oh, I don't see any dot. As mentioned in an earlier video, the conversion crystals in this type of laser are sensitive to temperature changes. So I was expecting a much dimmer dot, but no dot at all is always worrying. Did I destroy it? All I could do was wait for it to heat up. Three minutes in, I was relieved to see a faint green dot. I centered the laser and started the test. It took 20 minutes before a second dot started appearing. Unfortunately, my SD card was filled up after 20 minutes of Ultra HD recording. I had to stop. It is however clear that the green laser has a very stable primary wavelength. The spectrum drift is barely detectable, if there at all. Annoyed by the fill card and a very long wait, I decided to go all in. Not only put the lasers in the freezer, but place them between the two heating plates on a flat iron. 
after five minutes I'm seeing uh, 63, 64 degrees. Did I mention you should not do this to your own lasers? I have altered the setup a little, using the 500 lines per millimeter diffraction grating and different lighting to hopefully give a better viewing experience. Here are the results from cooking frozen lasers. The results from the heated experiments are comparable to the non-heated, slightly longer drift on the direct diode lasers from the extra heat, faster first light from the green laser, but still no distinct wavelength drift on that one. The conclusion is then, yes, some lasers drift in wavelength with temperature. Higher temperature equals longer wavelength. But don't expect to visibly change the color of a laser to another by cooling or heating it. And don't freeze a green DPSS laser. They really don't like it. But why does the drift in wavelength happen? It basically boils down to materials expanding when heated. This expansion also changes the interatomic distances, making it easier for the electrons to break bonds. The lower energy needed produces light photons of lower energy, and photons of lower energy have longer wavelength. Okay, I was curious to see if this was possible to show with simple tools and I'm happy with the results. Another thing I'm happy about is that this video is brought to you by CuriosityStream, a subscription streaming service that offers over 2000 documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. Get unlimited access starting at just $2.99 a month. And for my viewers, the first 30 days are free if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash brainx75 and use the promo code brainx75 during the sign up process. What I really like about CuriosityStream is the overall high quality of the titles, no matter the subject. For example, I have no interest in fungi. Or so I thought until I randomly watched The Kingdom How Fungi Made Our World. The beautiful imagery and the well-told story with the passion made this a joy to watch. But that's just my opinion. Check it out yourself using the link in the description. And remember to use the coupon code BRAINIAC75 for a free month and to help me at the same time. Thank you. And thanks for watching. In a future video, I will test if the green laser is emitting infrared light when it is cold enough to appear broken. I will also be able to show you the laser's real power level since I have ordered a laser power meter with the generous help from my patrons. You're all awesome. Thank you so much for helping out. It's really appreciated and important for a niche channel with monthly quality uploads like mine. It helps a lot. Check out my Patreon page if you haven't seen it yet. Bye for now.